The Institute of Marine and Coastal Sciences is one of the largest institutes at Rutgers University with over 90 faculty in 23 different departments. While the primary focus is, is research, we also have a significant undergraduate and graduate teaching curriculum. We're really focused on what we call the, the changing oceans and, and our focus goes all the way from both poles to the tropics. I work along the West Antarctic Peninsula and that's the fastest winter warming place on Earth. We're trying to understand when you change the ocean, physics, how it ripples all the way through the food web and the changes we're seeing are driven by changes in climate. One of the most significant accomplishments that we've made at the university over the last decade has been the development of a fleet of ocean-going gliders that can essentially be sent anywhere on the, on the planet and controlled literally with an iPod. What's great about the gliders is you deploy them, they can fly for months at a time and collect thousands of profiles as opposed to hundreds of profiles from the ship. We want the satellites and robots to map the ocean. And that will be critical because if we want to understand how these physical changes are driving the biology, we need to be down there all year round. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. As far as we can tell, ever since the Earth was formed, we've had an ocean. And we've managed to change the planet big time in only the last couple of hundred years. The big, big changes were primarily through the Industrial Revolution, the in use of fossil fuels. Corals need pristine environments. They need oceans that are very, very unpolluted. We are destroying corals uh, by two major phenomena. By adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, we have acidified the ocean, and we've also increased the temperature of the ocean. So those two stressors become a major phenomenon which is very difficult to undo on timescales of, uh, of, of one human lifetime. There are economic aspects of corals which are obvious in terms of tourism, in terms of, of the development of, of many nation states in the world. We are running out of antibiotics. So coral reefs become a major player in the search for novel drugs, not just for cancer drugs, for antibiotics, for many other drugs. We have to be stewards of the oceans because the oceans are the stewards of us. Thompson Reuters recently conducted a poll uh, ranking the top oceanographic research institutions in the world and records ranked fourth. Our high ranking is really a function of the 90 plus faculty members that we have associated with the Institute, each of whom is arguably the best in their respective specific field. We believe that with global warming, with climate change, with a warmer ocean, we're going to have more frequent storms and more intense storms. And over the last 20 years, we've greatly improved our ability to forecast the tracks of hurricanes. And that is because we've improved the global models and we see the interactions of the storms with the global circulation that controls their track. During those 20 years, we've made zero progress on forecasting the intensity of the storms. The intensity of the storms are what controls the amount of damage that occurs when they do make landfall. And that's where we have to improve our models in the future. If we also have track and intensity, we will know better how to respond, we'll know better where we have to evacuate people, what do we have to preposition to respond, and how we can work this better in the future. Our models are projecting rates of sea level rise of approximately maybe up to 10 millimetres per year, a one metre rise by the year 2100. And the impacts on that are severe. If sea level is rising, then the impacts of a storm surge will be much greater. From 1821 to 2012, sea level has risen in New York approximately 50 centimetres. So the impact of Hurricane Sandy was severe, not only because it coincided with the tidal cycle, but it coincided with a sea level height that we have not seen for over 100,000 years in New York. Using a variety of techniques, we've been able to look at dramatic changes in the ocean environment over a period of four billion years. Over the last several decades, we've been able to refine these techniques and look at changes that have occurred as a result of rapid changes in, in climate. There's not a member of our society that isn't aware of the dramatic changes that global warming is bringing on us and the challenges ahead are immense for us in terms of what we do at the Institute.